Frames per second are vital for any VR experience. If your application drops below 60 frames per second, users can experience simulation sickness. Since it's so important, let's see how we can add our frames per second in our view while we're running our games. To follow along in Unity, go to the description and download the free VR template and additional resources. Open up the VR template, add the additional resources, and we're ready to get shrimping. Opening up the project, we have one prefab and one script. This is going to be a quick one for you guys. And just to see what we're working with here, let's throw this prefab right on the camera offset and expand it out. Starting off with the parent object, it's going to be a UI canvas and it's set to screen space camera and it's going to need a camera to render to. So we're gonna use the main camera for that. And then if you come down here, this is just gonna be a little backdrop for how we're displaying our frames per second. And then we have the text associated. Now, the way I have this set up, it is set to screen space camera. That will just allow for when we are looking around with our head mounted display, it'll just track and constantly change the frames per second and keep it in view for us. Now, there's not much else to this prefab, so let's dive into the script really quick called Display FPS, and I have it sitting here right on the text. In looking at the script in the editor, you can see it has an update delay, and this is just going to determine how frequently we update our frames per second, and I'm just going to set it to 0.1. And let's open the script and see what we have. Jumping in here, first we import Text Mesh Pro because we have to manipulate text when we're updating the UI. Uh, we also have the update delay that's responsible for determining how frequently we're updating our frames per second. We have the target frames per second right here. So this is what we're aiming for because, well, Meta wants that. But if you want to change it, you can change this number. We also have the current frames per second, obviously going to hold the current frames per second. And then we have Delta Time, which I'm going to talk about in one moment. And finally, the Text Mesh Pro U GUI. And in our start function, we just get this component right here and then we start a coroutine called display frames per second and let's take a look at that down here it is going to constantly be doing this it's never going to end until the program and it's just going to check if the current frames per second are greater or equal to what our target is which is going to be that 72 and it's going to change it into my shrimpy blue color and if it is lower than our target then it's going to turn it into my shrimpy pink and then just display it and wait the update delay seconds and where the real work is taking place is in the update function. And if you remember, the update function is called every single frame. So it's going to call this generate frames per second every single frame. And what it does is it comes in here and it gets the current delta time. And what delta time is, is the difference between the last frame that completed versus the current frame that completed. And if we're looking for frames per second, that time is exactly what we need. So right here, we use time.unscaled or uh, unscaled delta time because the other form of delta time that you can use actually can be controlled by something called time scale. So when you're playing things like super hot, things are slowed down, you do that through time scale. And so to avoid that and continue our frames per second, if we have slow down mechanics in our games, you just use unscaled delta time. So this grabs just the current delta time. And then we say, well, it's one frame divided by however long that took. And that gives us our current frames per second. And that's really it. And you can see when I'm booting up, it is tracking and updating the frames per second. And there are a lot of factors that come into play when getting frames per second, like poly count, draw calls, particles, and textures. But I'm going to have to dive into optimizing those a little later because, well, your shrimp got married and now he's going on his honeymoon. Let me know if you have any fun suggestions about Iceland. And well, I'll see you when I get back. Bye-bye.